So today we are going to find domain of the function f in x, which is equal to root over log of cos 2 pi x to the base x. Let me keep this function on the top so that it stays in front of our eyes while we solve this question. Now the first necessary condition will be that whatever is under the root shall be either positive or shall be equal to 0. So I have written log of cos 2 pi x to the base x to be greater than or equal to 0. Now we notice that our variable is in the base 2, right? So our base is also varying. So I will have two cases. Why? Because we know that when the base is from 0 to 1, our inequality shall change when we take anti-log. Whereas when our base is greater than 1, then our inequality remains as it is. Let's first discuss the first case. When the x is from 0 to 1, then first of all, let's write our inequality that is uh, log of cos 2 pi x to the base x is greater than or equal to 0. Now let's take anti-log. So it would look like cos 2 pi x is less than or equal to x raised to 0. Now any real number to the power 0 is what? 1. Right. So we can write this as cos 2 pi x is less than or equal to 1. Now we notice one thing that this statement is correct for all real values of x. Why am I saying this? Let's look at the graph of cos 2 pi x. So we have the inequality cos 2 pi x is less than or equal to 1. So let me draw a line cos 2 pi x or y equal to 1 on the graph. Now this whole region that is the whole graph of cos 2 pi x is equal to y is coming under or is included in the line y is equal to 1, right? So it is obeying the inequality. So whole graph of cos 2 pi x is equal to y obeys the inequality cos 2 pi x is less than or equal to 1. That's why I said that this inequation is true for all real values of x. Now check where we have started this case, right? Uh, we have taken that x belongs to 0 to 1 and in that case only we got that x is belonging to real set. So what we finally get is intersection of this both, right? Because only when x is belonging to 0 to 1, we are getting this x belongs to real set, right? So finally what we get is x belongs to 0 to 1. Now, let me mark this interval as our first interval. That's amazing. Now, our second dear case is waiting for us since long because, you know, we were busy solving the first case. So now let's go to the second case. It says when x belongs to 1 to infinity. Now, what shall happen in this case? So first of all, we will write our original condition that is, log cos 2 pi x to the base x shall be greater than or equal to 0. Now let's take anti log. So it becomes cos 2 pi x shall be greater than or equal to x raised to 0. Now here the inequality didn't change because our base is greater than 1. Now this can be written as a cos 2 pi x is greater than or equal to 1. So this basically means that cos function should be greater than or equal to 1. Now you know that the output of the cos function ranges from minus 1 to 1, right? So it can never be greater than 1. But yes, equality can be hold. So what this basically means is cos 2 pi x should be equal to 1. Now tell me. For what input in cos function do I get the output as 1? More precisely, for what angle theta shall I get cos theta equal to 1? So, for this, you can also refer the graph. So, seeing the graph, you will note that at every even multiple of pi, we get the cos function output as 1. So basically, what it means is cos 2n pi is always equal to 1, where n belongs to an integer. So comparing cos 2n pi and 
cos 2 pi x, we see that x shall be equal to n. That is, x should be integer. That's why we can say that this inequation is true for all x belonging to an integral set. Now let's take intersection of the case which we have taken that is x belongs to 1 to infinity and the result which we got from the case that is x belongs to an integral set. So finally after taking intersection we come to conclusion that x can be any number like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. That is we get x belongs to set of all natural numbers except 1. Let me mark this as our second interval. Now as both these cases of x are possible, that is either x can be from 0 to 1 or x can be greater than 1. So we will take union of the results of these cases to get the final result of condition 1. So finally, for condition 1, our x belongs to interval 0 to 1 or set of natural numbers except 1. Now one condition will also come that uh, x should be greater than 0 and not equal to 1 because uh, x is in base of log, right? But this thing we already covered in condition 1 by taking two cases of x where in one case x was belonging to 0 to 1, 0 and 1 not included and in second case x was greater than 1. So we need not consider this condition again. So let us go directly to condition 2 in which we will take cos 2 pi x to be greater than 0 because we know that log always takes in positive values. Now let's solve this inequality using the graph of y equal to cos 2 pi x. So we take a line cos 2 pi x or y equal to 0 and then we observe that for what values of theta shall cos theta be greater than 0. Here our theta is 2 pi x of course. So we will note that all the intervals that are coming above the line y equal to 0 are giving us positive values of cos 2 pi x. So one observation we can make is that this is coming somewhere between two odd multiples of pi by 2, right? But we cannot simply state this. Why am I saying this? Because you observe that the negative values are also coming between two odd multiples of pi by 2. So let me fix these two angles minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. Now we will define the interval with respect to these angles. Now we already know that cos function repeats itself after every 2 pi interval. So I can basically say that for this inequality to be satisfied my angle which is 2 pi x must belong to the interval minus pi by 2 plus 2 and pi to pi by 2 plus 2 and pi in open braces where n belongs to an integral set. So now let me divide this whole thing by 2 pi. So what I get is x belongs to n minus 1 by 4 to n plus 1 by 4. Now we got interval for x in second condition. As my x shall satisfy both these conditions, so let me take intersection of this both. For ease, let me put these intervals on a number line. So, I kept the interval 1 in red and the interval 2 in blue. Now, let me shade the common values in yellow. So, as you can clearly see that from 0 to 1, I get two different intervals namely 0 to 1 by 4 and 3 by 4 to 1. Now we can also notice that all my natural numbers except 1 are also covered in this intersection. It is because of the fact that we saw that the second interval says that x should belong to n minus 1 by 4 to n plus 1 by 4. 
where n belongs to an integer. Now clearly n minus 1 by 4 is less than n and n plus 1 by 4 is greater than n. So always n will lie between these two numbers. So I finally get my intersection as x belongs to 0 to 1 by 4, union 3 by 4 to 1, union 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. All the natural numbers except 1. That's it. This is my domain of f of x.